you know, just obviously time to turn the page from, you know, from the Auburn game uh, and, and getting ready for Missouri. My wife, very quickly when I got home after the Auburn game, I was staring at the stat sheet and she basically said, get over yourself and get ready for Missouri. And she was probably right. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, you know, it looks like Missouri is, is, is you know, going to be as healthy as they've been in a long time. Uh, you know, with 23 Tillman back playing, um, you know, and from from everything we've been studying, it seems like Smith will play as well, number 13, who, you know, is their best perimeter shooter. So um, two teams that are hungry for a win. I don't know if we've really talked about the run that Mason's been on, I guess, the last two and a half, three weeks. Just how impressive has it been in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, what Mason's done is, you know, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's played as well as anyone in the country of late. And, uh, you know, again, I think it's just, a, you know, how hard he's worked. And, and, and I think he's just improved in so many areas. We've talked about it in the past after games and stuff, just his, his ability as a ball handler, his ability in one-on-one -on -one situations, his ability to draw free throws attempted. Um, and then I, I, to be honest with you, I mean, it's not often that in a college game a player would have 40 points and you would say that he probably passed up two or three shots where he should have been shot ready. Um, you know, and then even the, the one pass that he threw to the, you know, to one of our fans um, across court, um, you know, even that one, I wish he would have shot it. Eric, you know, Jimmy Witt obviously is from Columbia, so it's a homecoming. So are you, him. right? I went to school there. Okay, uh, I'm from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah. He, but you went there. I did go there. Okay. Yeah, I was there only four years though. I got made out in four years. Um, you know, it's a homecoming game for Jimmy. He's obviously coming off a really uncharacteristic offensive game for him. How do you think he'll respond? They haven't you know trying to have a bounce back game back in his hometown. I mean, the great thing is he can't shoot any worse. That's that's the good thing. Um, but he's he's responded. You know, you look at. Um, you know, maybe two games, Kentucky and Auburn, but the two games that Jimmy struggled offensively and he's bounced back from those. And, um, you know, his back's been bothering him for sure. Um, he's been in getting a ton of treatment. He will not practice today. Uh, he will not even suit up today. Um, so, uh, you know, but we're hopeful that he can bounce back and have a good game. And, and we're anticipating that he'll play, but... Um, we really, until we practice tomorrow, I don't, I don't know how much he'll be able to do tomorrow. You, you try to get guys. He breathing. did get an MRI too, to this morning. You, you've done a good job of trying to I get, think. you've done a good job of trying to get guys breathers, but then the guy you put in is, yeah, how important is it for, you the, said it, yeah. for the guy to rep, that, that comes in and replaces, whether it's Mason, Jimmy, somebody to step up and make plays to kind of get those guys some more minutes. On yeah, the we just have, you know, I. One thing that, you know, look, we're, we're like, uh, right when I thought we had kind of figured out who we were, um, I thought we figured out our, our, our late game packages. I think roles were clearly defined. We, you know, we had the injury. And so now we're kind of reinventing ourselves. All of a sudden now we're playing two bigs. Because of the makeup of our team, um, we can't play five guards anymore. We don't have five guards to even throw out there, which was kind of a mismatch for other people that we could do for short stretches. We don't even have the ability to put five guards out there. Um, and then when you look at um, Adrio, Reggie, Ethan, Scylla, they're, they're all kind of fours and fives. Um, and so offensively, we're going to add some new plays today. We added three new plays prior to the Auburn game. We'll probably add another three or four today. We'll probably add one or two tomorrow because we have to run different plays based on who we are right now. Um, because Isaiah is such, I mean, when you think about the offense we ran with him, he was so heavily involved in stuff. Um, and so now we've, we've got to change and we've got to tinker and, um, you know, yeah, we need somebody to step up. I know that's what the original question was, but we, we, we can't have somebody come in a game and get beat back door like we did against Auburn, and we, 
you know, we don't get beat back door the rest of the, like that's that's not how our defense is schematically set up. So we need everybody to follow the game plan and and um, you know when somebody's down, you need somebody to step up. And Mason stepped up offensively, but we need somebody to step up just to supply some minutes. Sorry. You're good. You mentioned Jimmy's struggles against Kentucky and Auburn. What have those two teams done against him? Um, I don't know if it's anything in particular. Um, Jimmy's back was obviously bothering him. I mean, for him to, to go get an MRI on, you know, our, our only off day of the week, um, you know, I mean, Kentucky for sure it was the length, I thought. Uh, obviously, Auburn's long and athletic as well, but uh, just as, you know, Steph Curry has a bad game every, you know, I mean, it's just going to happen from an offense. He still had, you know, he stole, you know, had three steals or whatever. He, he rebounded the ball. He just didn't, he just put the ball in the hole that night. Um, but, he, like I said, he's bounced back and had some huge offensive games and, and hopefully the rest not practicing today, not practicing yesterday. We always go light on a travel day. So in reality, he's kind of going to get three days off because I don't really need him to do anything tomorrow either. Um, just need him to wake up Saturday morning and feel fresh. How did you Cheney become more consistent over the last couple of weeks? I mean, he's, you know, he's, he, if you look at Reggie's shooting percentage, it's always been really good um, this year. I think it's, you know, the, the area that we really needed Reggie to improve on was defensive rebounding. And I think that's, you know, of late, he's done a really good job of, of def defensive rebounding and then staying out of foul trouble. situation. Just what are you looking for from, from Ethan and, and Silla when you do put them in? I mean, what, what are you hoping for? You know, I... I'm probably too honest with, with these press con but just play your minutes. Like, just rebound, just defend. And then if you get a basket, that's extra for us. Don't, you know, don't come in and, and try to do anything other than, hey, just, just, you know, how do you go from playing 30 seconds to playing three minutes? Well, just stay within the framework of what the team needs, which is energy, defensive rebounding. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's what we need from, from those guys. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, he's playing hard, but you know, we need to, you know, look at the defense, like defensive rebounds last game. Like we need defensive rebounding. I mean, that's that, you know, like whether wh whoever we play, you know, defensive rebounding is, and that's why Reggie, you know, Reggie's an awesome offensive rebounder. Like he's he's awesome offensively rebounding, and offensive rebounding is usually a little bit harder than defensive rebounding. But for whatever reason, he's got a real knack at the offensive end to go get a putback and stuff. And, and an area that he's got to continue to improve on is defensive rebounds. Same thing with Adriel. Like, both those guys uniquely are really good offensive rebounders, um, but need more. We need more, and they need more defensive rebounding in their, in their, in their game. And, and both of them, I think, made a, a big step in the right direction, um, you know, against Auburn. But we have, we have three bigs that are, that are pretty good offensive rebounders you could throw Ethan in there too, but defensive rebounding is what this team needs, you know. And 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 we, and we all have to do what the team needs. I gotta. That's why I'm adding new offensive plays, and uh, I gotta I gotta figure stuff out too. That, I mean, we have a completely new roster when you take somebody out that's scoring that many points, and who is. Look at Isaiah Joe turns the game into a four-on-four -four game. That's what he does because people don't ever leave him because of the threat of three. So, all these plays and sets and system we, that we have are kind of thrown out the window right now. He's not a high volume guy when it comes to the stat sheet, but what have you seen from Mitchell Smith, number five from Missouri? Active, versatile. You know, he's able to uh, switch pick and rolls um, where there are other two bigs. They'll play different coverages. They'll soft trap. They'll aggressively trap with with uh, 14 Nico and, and 23 Tillman. But, you know, Smith allows him to kind of play small ball a little bit and match up with people, and, he, and he's a, a threat from, uh, from perimeter three as well. You know, talking about adding things at this point of the season, kind of having to redefine your team, how, how difficult is that? How challenging is that? 
Uh, I mean, for me, coaching in the minor leagues, it's, it's, it's a way of life. So, I, I mean, it's not, it's not really bothering me at all. Um, you know, I probably work for some coaches that at the collegiate level that that would, you know, it would be a little bit, you know, unique or whatever. But um, I think that when you coach in the minor leagues, you're constantly adjusting. And so it's not really – I mean, the good thing is, because I brought it in, is like I'm getting these – I get these things in the mail – I mean, this guy sent me this thing today from Indiana. This is awesome. Like, the guy sent me, I left the other seven pages. He sent me, you know, I've never seen these diagrams before, but he went through 1607 mark, you're four out, one in, you got nothing. 1538, three out, two. So it's, like, awesome. I, got, I get a lot of help, too. So from your, kind of your background or your experiences geared you for, for this? I th I, yeah. I mean, I think that... Um, Coaching the minor leagues where players are getting called up or sent down, you have to constantly be on the fly. That doesn't mean it's going to look good or work, but it's not bothering me, I guess, is the best thing to say, Bob. Yeah, I remember in the summer, coaches call. You'd already been on, so I didn't get to ask you about it, but uh, Conzo Martin said he played, he was a player against, you were a coach, and that you He played for Grand Rapids, yep. Yeah, he said you talked a lot of trash. Too. Man. I mean, I guess you'd have to ask Zoe. I don't know if it's, I mean, I don't do it. Yeah, I don't do it now, but um, certainly, you know, in the pros, you might tell, you know, might let a guy know you're backed way off him or, you know, try to encourage an opposing player to shoot, something like that. Um, maybe in the minor leagues that happened. Well, what do you remember about him? From those great competitor. Uh, he was on a great team coached by Brendan Sir. Brendan Sir, who's in charge of coaching you and does these podcasts and um, puts on coaching clinics all the time. And, and uh, Brendan Sir actually had been an assistant with Chuck Daly, and he, and he was Zoe's coach. And uh, they had five rookies on that team. Ray Jackson was on that team. Kwanzaa, they were really good. And he could shoot the ball, and he was really, really tough. I mean, he was a, he was a really good basketball player. Back, I guess he just called a sore back. The MRI show there's no. Nothing yeah, he had serious. an injection. I don't know what you know. I don't know what it was or whatever, but um, just constant rehab between now and, and game time. Some losses in conference play. What is it about this team's makeup that I guess the individual guys that allows them to, to bounce back the way they have more often than not? Yeah, I mean, I think like for us, it's it's uh, you know everybody talks about take one game at a time or whatever, but you know like. There's only one thing we can control right now, you know, and it's, it's how do we, you know, come out and play against uh, Missouri. I mean, that's, that's kind of all we can control. And our guys have done a, a, an incredibly great job of, of not having hangover losses where, you know, we lose and then it carries over to the next game and we lack energy, um, you know, so – and, I, you know, I expect our team to come out and play with, you know, even though it's an early start, it's one of the, you know, we haven't had a lot of early starts this year, but it's a, you know, it's a game on the road with an early start. And I will tell you, like, you know, our shoot-around time is at 8 a.m. Um, at Missouri. We cannot shoot in their building tomorrow night, which normally we do because there's a concert there. Uh, yesterday, I was texting with the guys and, you know, said we might let them sleep in on Saturday and we, you know, we're not going to be able to shoot uh, Friday night, which we normally do. Probably won't have a shoot around because I don't want to get them up at 7.30 for an 8 o'clock shoot around and got a phone call and some of the guys said, hey, you know, let's discuss having a shoot around or let's figure out what we can do if we can't get in the gym. That's the type of guys like 99.9% .9 of the teams, if you told them that you had an 8 o'clock shoot around slot, and you're going to let them sleep in, they would probably say, okay, great. They wouldn't, you know. But, but I actually got a phone call yesterday, and it was from Mason, and said, hey, coach, can we, can we talk about, you know, that? What, is that? what does that say to you? It says uh, all the things that we've talked about, Bob, you know what I mean, like way back in the summer, um, you know, that, that they're buying in, that they, uh, that they have a high will to win. And I think they're showing maturity. I mean, I think when you get a phone call like that, you think it's a mature group, and and um, it's.
it's a good it's a good phone call. With um, um, Jimmy, you know, he's such a mature, even keeled, steady, whatever adjective you want to use, guy. I mean, I would think he would bounce back from a tough game better than most. And he was 0 for 6 in the first half, only took one shot in the second half. Do you think he just felt like, hey, I'm going to rebound and play defense. It's not my, I'm not hitting my shots, let other guys shoot. What did you make of that? I, th I thought his back stiffened up in the second half. I mean, I, no, uh, you know, noticeably in the second half defensively and, and, and offensively. I thought he didn't have the same mobility, um, you know, that maybe he did early in the game. Uh, just because of Mizzou's record, do you use, like, the Vanderbilt beating LSU or, or how they beat Florida at, at Missouri, Missouri, when they've had their pieces, they beat Illinois. Illinois is a ranked team right now. Um, I think Florida is one of the most talented teams in our league. I think Florida is one of the toughest matchups in our league. Um, a lot of those guys, we played against them last year in the NCAA tournament. They're, they're good. Missouri put it to them. And, uh, they, I mean, they have an all-league type center who's got great size who has missed the last eight games, Nate. And I think that that, you know, that affects them. And so, and Smith being out the last couple, that, like Smith's a, a really good shooter. And so just as we're not the same team without Isaiah, they're not the same team without Tillman, you know. And so I don't, I don't, I don't look at their record at all because, one, they're good at home, and, two, they've beaten some great basketball teams. Tuesday night, but the atmosphere did deliver some pretty cool moments, especially maybe in the overtime period when Mason Jones kind of fell into the stands and he was limping a little bit, and then the crowd – cheered him to life. Have you ever seen anything like that? And then maybe just about the basketball IQ of Bud Walton. Yeah, I mean, the, cr the crowds have been awesome. Um, you know, my family and I talk about them all the time, whether it's my son Michael or Danielle or, you know, I mean, it's an incredible environment. Great basketball IQ. I keep trying to let the players know, and I've said it a hundred times, like, this type of atmosphere is so unique. Like, you have to appreciate it. Certainly, I appreciate it, and I'm coming from a place that we sold out a lot of games in the last three years, but it's, it wasn't as loud as what we're experiencing. Obviously, when you have, you know, 9,000 more people in a building, that's, you know, it's almost double the size of what I've been used to. But, you know, we travel around to other SEC places, and they're not, they're not like this. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, and that's why it's so important that we play so hard every night. Like we don't want to, we don't want to lose any of the momentum that we have with our, that our, with our fans respecting our effort. Nobody, nobody wants to lose. There's no excuses. I'm not, we, you know, we lost to Auburn because they played better than us. It's not, it doesn't matter who didn't play for us. There's no, never an excuse in our locker room. Um, we want to learn from every loss, like why did we lose, where's our holes, what's the other team's scouting report on us. Like that, that's how you get better. Um, sometimes you don't get the results you want, but, but you've got to continuously try to improve. I guess Tillman played 12 minutes at A&M. You know, I think he had two points and four boards, and he has four points and two boards. But, and, but now he's going to have a couple extra days to practice. So how much better do you expect him to be in? Like you said, it's really in the Mizzou team that's won in six in their last seven games. This might not be the team you're seeing if Tillman, especially Smith, are back. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that any time a player gets to practice, because it's my understanding that he didn't hardly practice at all, if at all, prior to the Texas A&M game. And now, now he's got a game under his belt, and you get a couple practices, and you get extra reps. You're back at home. I think all those things are, are – uh, you know, look, we're – this is this – is, I mean, Missouri's looking at this game, and they're circling it, saying this is a game that, 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 that we got to go win, you know. And, and, and for us, it's a game that we got to go try to figure out a way to, to win, you know. So I, I think you're going to see great effort from both teams.